You may know our next speaker from his work at Trinity Rep, where he will be entering his 13th season uh, next year as a member of the Resident Acting Company. But he is also one of the newest and most influential members of the Pride Board of uh, Rhode Island. Joe served as a member of the National Advisory Council for the Every 28 Hours Project, a series of plays written and inspired by the people of Ferguson, uh, living in the aftermath of the events surrounding the death of Michael Brown. He produced the, uh, the Every 28 Hours plays, he curated the Our Response plays, a collaboration with the One Minute Play Festival, the City of Providence, and the Southside Cultural Center. Without further ado, I want to give, you, give it up for Joe Wilson, Jr. Hey, everybody. Um, it is so great to be here, and I would like to take this chance to thank Tim. Tim, thank you for everything that you've done to pull this all together. Uh, thank you to the Wilbury Group uh, for your wonderful reading and all the speakers. And more importantly, thank you to our community for coming together to affirm our commitment to each other. And I'm gonna follow Kate's lead and use history as my guide, not as an assumption of what we don't know, but simply as a reminder. The month of June is observed as Pride Month in honor, remembrance, and appreciation for events that changed history forever. The Stonewall Inn was the center of a series of spontaneous demonstrations by members of the gay community against a police raid that took place in the early morning hours of June 28, 1969. The backdrop for this watershed moment was the LGBT the backdrop for this watershed moment in the LGBTQ struggle for civil rights were, of course, the tumultuous 60s. But let me be clear, the Stonewall riots were specifically a response to the oppression our community felt at the hands of the police and our political leadership. And those structures put in place to limit our ability to become a community. Let's talk about the people at the center of that movement in a moment in time that changed history. What made Stonewall so special, if you will, was that it attracted and served some of the poorest, most marginalized people in and of the gay community. People of color, drag queens, doing drag could get you killed, y'all. Transgender people, sex workers, and homeless youth. So this was not just an early morning raid on a bar, but this was a raid and a desecration of a sanctuary. This was a raid and desecration of a safe space, of a home, of an island within a sea of hostility. This tension between the police and gay residents erupted in several days of protests and violence. The people had had enough, and they fought back. And more importantly, they organized. Activist groups in the neighborhood concentrated their efforts on establishing places for gays and lesbians to be open without fear of being arrested or murdered. And when I speak of these places, these activists were not simply interested in safe spaces being limited to the confines of a bar or a club, but also in our jobs, in our churches, in our own homes, and yes, in our streets gathered as we are today as one community coming together, coming out of the shadows to remember and yes, to celebrate, to organize, to recommit, to reaffirm, and to actively create a world where a closet is only used for the purpose of storing our junk and not used for hiding its people. So on June 28th, 1970, the first gay pride marches took place, and today gay pride events are held all over the world to mark the Stonewall riots and to reaffirm our commitment to equality and justice for all. Fast forward to, and pardon me if I become a little emotional, um, to almost what was a year ago today, uh, we were at the beginning of one week away from our pride celebration when the world was horrified and saddened by the tragic events of Orlando at the Pulse nightclub where 49 souls were lost, 58 others were wounded, and it was indeed the deadliest mass shooting by a single shooter in the history of this country. It was also the deadliest terror attack in the United States 
since September 11th. But what makes this different, what shook me to my core was the fact that I saw myself in the faces of the photographs provided by the families of the dead. I saw myself as one of the wounded who while physically struggling for their lives would then go on to struggle for acceptance. I saw myself in these images not just in terms of my sexuality or the fact that any one of us could have been in a bar and who would have been victims of this senseless violence. This tragedy was different for me because of the racial composition of its victims. This was not just an assault on gay people in a gay bar, but it was an assault on those who sought refuge, comfort, and solidarity from others like them. All victims belonged to or had affinity towards the Latino community. Very complicated and difficult conversations around race, identity, and community were inspired by that horrible day in June. I was indeed struck by the wonderful way in which our community across the world came together in grief, support, and solidarity. But I was also struck by the inability of our community to acknowledge our continued challenges around welcoming marginalized persons into the fold. I was disheartened to see that while we have come a long way in terms of rights and opportunities for the broader, mainstream, privileged members of our community, there were and are still many people living in the shadows. Race, class, gender, identity, and culture continue to play a major role in dictating who gets access to the rights and privileges afforded by our struggle. But we must remember that this movement began as the result of the courage displayed by and on the backs of the most disenfranchised among us. We owe them our lives. I remember standing at our own vigil for the victims in Orlando last year, just one week before Pride, thinking, what can I do? How can I help? How can I give back? Could I in some way show the kind of leadership and guts it takes to resist against all resistance? In this post-marriage equality world, how could I play a part in helping to carve a safe space for more disenfranchised people, more disenfranchised LGBTQ people who feel left behind by a movement begun by them, but by a movement that does not reflect them and their particular struggles? This is why I joined the Pride Board of Rhode Island, because history has taught us that when we dive right in, have the tough conversations and lead with actions. When we stand together with a common purpose and goal, we cannot be silenced, we cannot be discouraged, and we cannot be defeated. We cannot allow this ongoing movement to fall victim to the old tactic of divide and conquer. The old divisible idea that I don't have what I don't have because you took it from me. We must fight racism. We must fight sexism, classism, and yes, homophobia within our own community as well. We are not immune to the demons that have plagued this great country as we all continue to grapple with this experiment that we call America. In closing, I commit myself to this movement for social justice for all. As a member of your pride board, I commit myself to demanding that our institutions truly reflect all of who we are and not just some. We must call on all of our institutions, we must call all of our institutions to question when they don't step forward, when they don't listen, and when they don't respond. We must use this, pardon me, we must use this coming together, this coming out in June to celebrate, yes, but along with our celebration of achievement, we must recognize that we all enjoy some measure of privilege because of that valiant band of renegade warriors, those original freedom fighters who spilt their blood on that city street on that dark, dark morning, just outside that village bar on that hot summer night in June. We all got work to do, y'all. This June, every June, every day, every month of the year to make sure that we don't silo this movement. This movement must be by, for, and all of us. And I come to you with pride. I come to you as a proud representative of Rhode Island Pride. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And um, I love you, and thank you. And thank you for hearing me.